Hey there, Ben Lepper here. Recently, I've gotten so many questions on how on earth you code a VexIQ robot for full volume. And, you know, I've been trying to, like, respond and put the code in the email, but it's, it's really hard and kind of complicated. So I figured, hey, why don't I just make a video that will answer all of your questions. This is going to be your ticket, basically, from square one to the end for coding just about any full volume robot. I'm going to kind of talk you through the whole process that I use um, and how it works. So, if you're going to follow along with me, there's a link under this video. Go and click that link first. You're going to need it. It's basically a worksheet of what we're doing. It's going to explain kind of what the code looks like, why we do the code, um, and it's also going to give you details on a lot of the stuff that you won't be able to see just by watching the video. So, the sheet, the, like the worksheet that you get with the email goes with this video. So, go and pause the video right now, get that, and then come back here and let's go ahead and start coding. All right, so here we are in VexCode. I just saved our project, and we are going to go ahead and set up our robot. Whenever I'm in VexCode, the first thing I always do is I set up the robot. How do we do that? Pretty simple. You're just going to hit this button right here. This is Devices and Add a Device. Uh, first device I usually like to add. I used to always add the controller first. That's bogus. I like to add the drivetrain first. So if I told you to add the controller first before, I'm sorry. Left motor, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at our robot. Here I can see my left motor is plugged in on, what is that, port 6. Right motor, and see that guy plugged in on port 1. Even if you use a gyro, I highly suggest you uncheck this gyro box. Um, that usually makes it work better. If it gives you three options, sometimes it'll say like internal gyro, gyro external gyro, or no gyro. Just hit the no gyro option. That is, seems to be best. Hit done. Perfect. Got ourselves a drivetrain. Now it's time to add our motors. I'm going to go ahead and add a motor for the intake. So I'll hit add a device. Here I only have one motor. You can see there's only one motor on this intake. If I had two motors on my intake, I would hit this motor group button right here. But I only have one, so I'm just gonna hit motor. I'm gonna plug that guy in on port four. And I'll just call it intake, perfect. Now I'm gonna add one more device. This is going to be a motor again. Again, this is just one motor. If I had two motors on my arm, um, I'd add a motor group, but for me, I just have one. I plug that one into port five. Perfect. And this is now going to be called the arm, because you can see that was the arm motor. Now for reversing, I usually suggest you don't reverse anything. If you add something as a motor group, I usually suggest you reverse one of them. So like, say that I had a motor group for my arm, then you reverse one of them. You don't know which one it's going to be, but always reverse one because almost every single motor group you use, you're going to have one reversed. But I only did a normal motor, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit that, hit five, um, and here's my arm. Cool, cool. I think we're ready to go. So this is basically everything that's on my robot. I also want to add a controller, so I'm just going to add a controller. Now this is where the fun starts happening. You actually have to decide how you're going to control your robot. How I usually do it, I'll show you. But basically, what I would do is I would just hit this until I get the right drive scheme. This is what I like. Um, I think some will call it arcade. It's or split arcade. I think it is the easiest way to make the robot move and go exactly where you want it to. But there's many other options. So um, you know, kind of click through them, pick what suits your fancy. I prefer this one though. Now at this point, we could just click these two buttons, set the intake and the arm on these. Um, buttons up here and we're good to go hit done and like download the program that would work great and if that is what you want absolutely go ahead and do it i think i want to hold uh actually i want to put the arm over here um i am just going to kind of run with this and then i'm going to show you how i like to code my intake because i like to code my intake a little differently from kind of the default but again you could totally just throw the intake on here and call it a day I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, though. I want to have more precise control over my intake, so I'll hit done. So an intake, usually, as you're picking up cubes, the idea is that you are going to need to pick up many, many cubes. You'll want it spinning and spinning and spinning for a while. How we do that is we use a simple block that we use a simple control scheme where you hit a button and it starts spinning. You have another button and that stops it. So I'll do something simple that will say something like this. When button, which button is it? L. So L up, L down, those are going to control my intake. They're not connect there. Oh, this is brain. I had it. Button L up is pressed. That's going to be spin intake forward. When button L down is pressed, we're going to go ahead and stop the intake. 
And if I ever need to spin it backwards, like to score, that's going to be E down for me. So when E down is pressed, go ahead and spin it reverse. Perfect. All right, we're good to go. Um, also, yeah, I think that seems good. So there's my intake control. That's pretty straightforward. Here's my arm control. What you're going to notice is if you go and test this out, the arm and the intake go super slowly. You have to, underneath the when started, add something that sets the intake and the arm both to 100% velocity. Now, another issue you'll notice is when I try and raise up the arm, check this out. See how I raise up the arm and it just like keeps falling down on its own? The reason is I have not set the arm's stopping mode correctly. So all I have to do is super easy to fix. All I've got to do is go into VEX code and I'm going to go ahead and set my arm stopping mode to hold. And now I'm just going to simply upload this code and the arm can stay wherever I put it. Perfect. So I think we should be good to go here. There's a few other like kind of niche things that I want to show you on uh, how you can code this. But let's go and test out this code and then I'm going to show you the more advanced stuff in just a sec here. All right, so here we are at the robot. I'm going to go ahead and just test out the controls. First, you can see my drivetrain. When I push the stick forward, it drives forward, backward, it goes backwards, and I can turn as well. Pretty nice. Um, if I go ahead and hit the arm up button, you can see it's moving the arm up. If I hit arm down, it's going down on that arm. Also, check this out. When I did the intake, see how I hit the forward button, but it's spinning backwards. It's not letting me pick up cubes. That's a problem. So let's go and see if we can fix that intake. All you're going to do is you're going to hit intake. And you see how it's not reversed? You're just going to reverse that motor, hit done, boom, we're good to go. Now our intake will spin the right way when we hit that button. And if you check it out, look at that. When I hit this up button, the intake is able to spin forward. Perfect. That's exactly what we needed. This robot is now ready for a math. This is going to be an awesome robot. I cannot wait to see um, how it does. So if you have any questions, um, go ahead and first look at the thing I sent you in an email. That is most likely going to answer almost all of your questions. Then if you still have questions, feel free to give me an email. But other than that, I can't wait to see what you build. This is going to be an awesome robot, and I'll see you at the competitions this year.